Hello and welcome to citiesabc.com series of interviews and podcasts. My name is Dinis Guarda and I'm here to talk about people that are leading the world in multiple different areas and the cities where we live. And uh, citiesabc.com was created as a platform to create new vision, new narratives for the cities where all of us live. Most of the world population is right now increasingly being based in cities, and we have still a lot of work to do, especially with all the challenges related with technology, related with the society, related with integration, even a lot of the different things from development, from digital transformation, and so forth. So this uh, video series has been running not for a long time. We only started actually two months ago, but we're very excited that we've been interviewing some leading people worldwide, and we passed already close to two million views. And uh, we are working to make this a very global footprint of people that are leading uh, our world in a lot of different areas. So today we have with us uh, two people that I'm very excited to uh, welcome to our podcast. So Nadia and Rajiv Sandani, welcome to our podcast, first of all. So um, I'm actually quite excited about, uh, I only discovered about you through a conference that we spoke together. But I was immediately uh, impressed, first of all, to say less, for what you achieved, both as entrepreneurs, but as both as founders of uh, one of the most dynamic um, art projects and foundations in the world. So the Sandani Art Foundation and the Dhaka Art Summit, which is right now a public accessible sculpture park, but as well an initiative that uh, has more numbers almost than actually most of the global events like uh, the, the, the events here in the UK, or the events in, even in Switzerland, uh, Art Basel and so forth. So uh, you are both entrepreneurs and you've been transforming the, the art scene in Bangladesh and as well right now with a huge presence around the world, but as well having created substantial business in Bangladesh that is an emerging country with a young population. And as well, uh, besides being the co-founder and trustee of the Sandani Art Foundation, you are as well the chairman of Gulf International Finance Limited and Managing Director of Golden Harvest Group, one of the leading diversified conglomerates in Bangladesh. In addition to this cultural philanthropy and artist, uh, you are as well, Rajiv is the Secretary General to the Bangladesh Human Rights Association, or foundation, and the founder of that, Tahir Ahmed Chaudhry Charitable Hospital uh, in Silet, and the Albina Sandani Trust. And Nadia is the co-founder and president of the Sandani Art Foundation, and director of the Dhaka Art Summit. And uh, she's established the Sandani Art Foundation to support the work of Bangladesh and South Asia contemporary artists and architects to increase their exposure. As part of this initiative, you've been founded the Dhaka Art Summit, which has since completed four successful editions under your leadership. And Nadia is as well a member of the Tate uh, South Asia Acquisitions Committee, the Tate International Council, Art Device Advisory, Advisory Council, and Al Sekai Avenue Programming Committee, which is one of the founding members of the Harvard University La Smithy Mittal South Asia Institute Arts Advisory Council. So I'm quite impressed to, with what you achieve. Welcome to our podcast. And um, as a context, I think especially people in the Western world don't understand I think how precious is what you achieve, because I know that uh, one thing is doing things in the Western world where we have all the capacity, but what you did there is, is not a simple task, and that's why I, I met you. So as a starting point, could you tell us a bit about both of you background? And as well, being a couple, I always respect that. It's not easy to keep a couple working together. So I would like to hear about uh, how did you come up to work together and to create these wonderful initiatives? Um, it all started through passion, actually. It all started through passion of collecting art and for the love of art. And thank God we have the same taste, the same passion. So that's how uh, we came to all this. It all started actually by collecting. Um, I had a passion for collecting. I've been collecting. I mean, before we got married, my family has been collecting. So um, I also inherited a lot of... Um, artworks from them and when Rajiv and I we, we got together we started traveling more for art going to art fairs and biennials and exhibitions documenta like all around the world and 
we kind of found our own taste of art because initially we were collecting more um, traditional um, classical artworks. But now, I mean, of course, the more we saw, the more we learned. And now um, the collection has grown. And through that, you know, while we were traveling and when we would meet people, they're like, oh, you're from Bangladesh. So what is the art scene like? I mean, we do have an art scene in Bangladesh, but it's only everything is just local. Everything is local. Galleries are local. Artists are all local based. There's, there hasn't been um, any international exposure. So that's when we thought that, you know, our artists, they're so talented. How come there's no platform? That's how the idea came that, you know, we should start a foundation. We should create a platform where the whole world can come and see these incredible artists. So that was the initial idea. Yeah, and just to add uh, with Nadia that, you know, things Bangladesh are, in Bangladesh are changing very fast. Uh, Bangladesh has been uh, growing over 6% over a decade. Last year, our growth rate was uh, 8%, which is the highest in Asia. So a lot of things are happening in Bangladesh and both of us, we are proud and we, and we believe we are fortunate to be Bangladeshi and living at this time when, when so much development is going on in our country. So one thing actually to add with Nadia, because you can know, see we always, when we would travel, we would see South Asian art. People would talk about South Asian art, but uh, in reality, actually Bangladesh had very little presence and people had very little idea. So that is how actually our journey started. And, and that is where we thought that, you know, let's do something meaningful that is going to actually change our art scene, that is going to put Bangladesh in the uh, global art map because you know see, see the south asian art history also started from bengal so bengal you know art culture all these things are in our system so keeping all these things in mind when we formed the foundation we actually started this event called Dhaka art summit and and this was the whole idea that okay we will create an event where people from around the world will come to our country and discover not only Bangladesh, the entire South Asian art scene, because you know, other than Bangladesh, there are seven other countries also, uh, which are part of South Asian countries. So that's how our uh, journey started. And over a period of time, we have been very fortunate, mashallah, last 10 years, like, you know, the uh, amount of response we got, the way our audience from year on year, like a lot of people are coming. And today, I'm also happy to tell you that, you know, starting from Bangladeshi modernist artists to contemporary artists, you talk about international museums, they have started collecting works of our artists. And even the exhibition that, you know, we have produced, we are producing from Dhaka Art Summit, they travel around the world. One of the exhibition that we produced in 2018, it has been over two years, it's still traveling. So, so, so like, you know, so, uh, of course, with all this, with the success and everything, we also got inspired. And now, of course, it has a big event. And for us, it was possible to do also because we have partnered with Bangladesh government, our cultural ministry. So they have, because, you know, to a large scale event like this, you need a lot of support. A lot of support starting from logistics, import, like manpower, uh, venue. So that is how we have formed a partnership and this has been running like, you know, we have finished our fifth edition just uh, on the Feb uh, February, we finished our uh, fifth edition this year. Probably we are the last uh, massive art event before uh, 2020. 2020 yeah. No, very impressive. So I, I think one of the things I would like to, to know, and I think probably before we go more in, in all the different things, because I know even your, your numbers are really impressive. But one of the things is, um, can you tell us about your group as well? I know that you build a, a, a strong technology and, and as well business group that has been behind as well this, which we need as well. And I like a lot. I'm a huge fan of the Medici and, the, and as well the people that, uh, that relate uh, business, ideas and heart, which is, I think, very difficult nowadays. And I think what you did is really impressive. So tell us a bit about that and as well the background when you started. How did you start? What were the difficulties? And I think this is very inspiring for people all over Southeast Asia, but as well in Africa, and a lot of people around the world or Latin America that I think need to see 
more examples about what you're doing and the projects that you're doing because it, it comprehends a strong business capacity, economical, then cultural, artistic, but as well digital and a lot of things because you're promoting these all over the world. So if you could tell us a bit about that background. So, so just to give you a bit of uh, background, uh, our company, we are quite diversified. We operate in uh, almost uh, 10 sectors. So it is quite diversified company. And uh, uh, one of our sector that we also operate is uh, information technology. And we are mainly uh, working on uh, BPO work, uh, software development, this kind of uh, uh, technology things we are doing. And Bangladesh actually in last 10 years, uh, there has been a lot of massive development when it comes to our information technology. Our, uh, our current prime minister, uh, honorable prime minister, one of her election manifesto was digital Bangladesh and government has kept their promise. So last 10 years, Bangladesh has invested a lot in technology. And during currently sitting in this uh, pandemic, looking forward, I think this is the only way forward for all of us. Even for us also, that when actually the lockdown started in Bangladesh on the 25th of March, everything we had to shut down. And it took us actually months to like, you know, start, but our technology company was only shut for 10 days and we were back online. So right now, actually, you know, we have 1500 people in our, uh, our IT company, Everyone is working from different parts of Bangladesh. And of course, we are fortunate to have internet and electricity. So this is also something, another amazing thing about Bangladesh is that, you know, see, even 11 years back, our electricity coverage was only 46%. Now over 96% of the population is also under the coverage of electricity. So now you have uh, technology available, you have electricity available. So our IT company, we are, now running at a, uh, from all over Bangladesh on a virtual platform. So it really doesn't matter that we know whether we are going to a building or office, physical distancing is not an issue. But in our other businesses, of course, that is a big challenge. So I think like, you know, moving forward, even a company like us, we are also trying to look more and more towards technology business. Uh, so one of the things that I'd like to touch, so I know that uh, Bangladesh has a very creative young population and is one of the fast growing economies, as you mentioned, but it, it's going through a lot of challenges. So as both entrepreneurs, but as well people that are dealing with probably the most important thing, that is the ideas, but as well the dynamics, what have been the challenges that you've been facing to put all together this? Because it's quite impressive from a, even from a foundation or even from the buildings and all the things you've been doing but as well to put a vision and to create something that right now is quite a global as well digital footprint. I think Bangladesh, we are uh, on the right track because if you look at the country's growth rate, it is actually also crazy. As I mentioned that you know, every year on year and last year it was 8%. So, and another blessings we have uh, about Bangladesh is that, you know, see every year, half a million graduates are coming out of the university. So we have educated workforce. And when it also comes to financial attractiveness, I don't think anybody will be able to beat Bangladesh. But only challenge, if I focus about the IT sector also, the only challenge is also the awareness. People actually don't know. Bangladesh is branded more for garments because when people think about garments, they think about Bangladesh because, you know, we are the second largest garments exporter and the largest cotton importer, which is the raw material. So, so we are not known for the technology, but, and, and as I said that our technology sector actually developed in last 10 years. So I think very soon it is going to change. So overall in a, in one word is the awareness. So people have less idea about Bangladesh, what is happening. But I think these are also going to change very fast because, you know, our ICT division has also uh, in the process of setting up six uh, high tech parts. So where actually all the technology companies will be also given priority. People from anywhere in the world will be able to come and directly set up their company there. So, so these are the things now, like, you know, we are doing this awareness buildings and all those things. So I think this is a big challenge, but overall, when it comes to manpower, we have solid people. And as, as you, 
of course the countries like this you know we are just 49 years old country there are a lot of challenges we are a newborn country we are also learning a lot of things but with these challenges i think also as i said that we are on the track but it's the problem is people don't know about this yeah completely and that, that is particularly important and as well one of the things that I like about your work is that you are not only doing things within the country, but creating these relationships with the Tate Modern, with the Harvard. Can you tell us about that? Because I think that is critical. And I think it's very important because there's a lot of prejudice, as you know, a lot of geopolitics and a lot of, uh, a lot of things are stupid about lack of information. Like you said, it's lack of awareness, but as well lack of just talking. And I think that is one of the things that I love about your work on that bridge not only about what you do in the country, but international. So Tate Modern, I, I co-chaired the South Asia Committee, South Asia Acquisition Committee for Tate. And when we also started, uh, you know, uh, we, we started our foundation in 2011, started Hakkad Summit in 2012. 2012 was the same year. Tate also formed this acquisition committee where Nadia and I, both of us, we are uh, members. And uh, Tate was the first actually institute Western institutions look at South Asian art so seriously. So, of course, we are very fortunate that, you know, it was really uh, nice of them to invite us in this uh, committee. And at the same time, while we are part of Tate, or we are also, we are the founders of Harvard uh, Lakshmi Mittal Institute Art Council. So with these institutions where we are supporting, we are also working. And at the same time, these institutions are also doing their research in South Asia. And they're doing their research, they're taking this knowledge back, and they are also sharing it with their community. Exactly. So Dhaka Art Summit is actually a big research platform. So it's not necessarily like we work because we work, it's a two-year research event. So what we do is we invite curators, multiple curators. The model of Dhaka Art Summit is actually quite unique. There's, there's not any particular model that we follow. It's our own model. So it's, yes, it's two years. It's like a biennial, but it's not a biennial. So it's where we have multiple curators and each have their section. And the curators that we invite are mostly institutional curators. And what they do is like we support their research across South Asia for two years. And they, for, for us, they put together this world-class exhibition, which, which is because it's curated by an institutional curator and it's open for the public. So in Bangladesh, you're actually seeing um, multiple world-class exhibitions under one roof, all free of cost and open to the public. So it's also exactly, it's a research platform and it's also given curators and researchers a lot of access to South Asia through our event. So that's why all of a sudden there's so much interest in South Asia. You know, museums are looking at South Asian art, institutions are looking, even it's given galleries a big uh, research place that, you know, where they're coming and finding talented artists because before the, our platform, before Dhaka Art Summit, I mean, yes, the artists did exist, but there was no platform. How do you find them? And that, that is key, and it's all about platforms, especially nowadays. So, so from, uh, from that research that you've been doing, um, can you highlight some of the results, especially the relationship with Harvard and with Tate? Because I think, it's, I think that, like you said, the, there's a lack of knowledge about this process and the lack of results as well. But I think it's that awareness and the the details that, that come out of this that make a big difference. I, I for instance, I work with Sweden and um, actually, for instance, uh, the Sweden government and a lot of universities made a, a lot of study to bring, for instance, creators and teachers international to stay in the country. And that changed the entire country in terms of creating innovation, in terms of creating relationships. It's something like that that you try to do. What do you publish this research? How do you relate? You relate with universities? Uh, just if you could contextualize a bit that. So, so for us, I mean, we are a platform. We want our artists to be all over the world in, you know, in every important museum, institution, um, exhibitions, because they're so talented. Only reason they were not being shown or written about or had the exposure is because people didn't have access to them. People didn't know. 
now we do and now you know for us the success is that you know when we see our artists in institutions or being represented or being you know exhibited at the venice biennale or documenta or biennales around the world so that's very impressive and the, so uh, sorry yeah, sorry it's not good uh, yeah, that lot of the institutions like you know Tate uh, and a lot of like you know important institutions around the world museums are also collecting now Bangladeshi artwork as well as like you know art from like other uh, South Asian countries so that was also one of our uh, sort of like you know part of our journey that you know we wanted to create this we wanted to create a presence of artists from South Asia to this uh, Western institutions so more people can see and more people can learn that is one thing another thing I also wanted to add which I also mentioned before that lot of our exhibitions that we have produced they have traveled around the world it traveled around the globe so this is sort of a common thing of Dhaka Art Summit that if any edition we finish after that these exhibitions travels so as I mentioned also before that one of the exhibition is still traveling for two and a half years and one more year to go. Yeah, fantastic. And, and as well, so I would like, I'm interested particularly being this platform and this podcast in particular about cities and relationships. So you've been, of course, building this in Dhaka. How is the relationship with the city? Because I know that you're getting around, I think over 400,000 people, at least for the, the events or for the Dhaka Art Summit, which I think is the biggest one. But as well, there's a relationship as well between the artists, the creators, the universities, I'm sure, but as well between your business and other business and partners. So how do you do all these relationships? Because I think that's what makes a society very strong. So, you know, see, uh, Dhaka, of course, we have one of the best uh, art school also in, in uh, Bangladesh called Charukola Institute. So a lot of talented artists are also coming out of that. And in general, like if you talk about business community and others, in general, people have interest in culture. So Bangladesh, actually, the great thing is any cultural event, you will see like, you know, hundreds and thousands of people are going. So, and Bangladesh is actually always, uh, always we appreciate culture, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's art, you see a massive pool of people and from all class. Culture is not like, you know, a lot of the places we go, we travel, we see that, you know, to an extent, like, you know, when we look at the audience, maybe in some cases, it's like, you know, a certain group, but in case of Bangladesh, it is for mass. People from all scale, like from uh, from all uh, uh, like you know areas. Yes, so our audience is always a diverse audience, and and this is how, as I said, that you know whether you are a businessman or whether you are working or whatever you are doing, like you know when it comes to culture, you will find everyone under the one roof. Another thing that you know because with with our business because we have a diversified um, company which is Golden Harvest. For us to do Dhaka Art Summit is only possible because we have this company and the logistics that we, the support that we have. Because for Dhaka Art Summit, we need engineers, we need architects, we need logistics people, we need um, uh, interior people, we need design team. Um, web developers. So everybody is at the golden harvest. So basically we all work together. So it's not actually separate. And the golden harvest team also knows that yes, Dhaka Art Summit belongs to them. Because if we were to do Dhaka Art Summit and we didn't have the support of golden harvest backing us, you know, then can you imagine like, you know, getting everybody, hiring everyone, um, you know, we need a, say we need a 3D design, we have to hire 3D people. If we need like logistics, we need to hire separate people. We need engineers. So what's happened with us, where everybody is in-house. No, that, so that's that how it's made possible. So can you tell us about the Golden Harvest Group? Because I think it's quite interesting and I think is the, the group behind it. And as well, I know that is, uh, you mentioned a bit, but just go a bit the history and what you're doing as well. 
So, so basically, like you know, we operate in uh, uh, it's quite diversified uh, company. So, one of our uh, focus business is uh, food. Uh, we are into frozen food. We are into ice cream. Uh, we also have the franchise of Domino's Pizza. We do like you know dry foods like munchies, chips, products like this. Then you know we also we are also into logistics business. So we are the joint venture partner of Nippon Express, uh, which is the fourth largest uh, uh, logistics company in the world. So we have invested together with this Japanese company. Uh, we are also into real estate development. We are into commodities. Uh, we are into uh, information uh, technology, aviation, insurance. Uh, so it's quite diversified. And one of the projects that we are also focusing now, and we hope, inshallah, it is going to be a massive project in Bangladesh that we are building country's first ever cold chain network. So this will be the country's first ever temperature control logistics system where we are going to have like you know, storage facilities all over the country with our transport logistics, uh, like you know, temperature controlled transport. And we are also investing this uh, entire cold chain company would be also like, you know, uh, quite uh, technology heavy because we, are, we want to use the advantage of the technology for our clients. And in this company, we have our joint venture partner who has invested with us in this project is IFC and IFC has also developed cold chain in India, China, uh, Cambodia, and many other countries where actually they first uh, developed the cold chains. We are very fortunate the construction is going on. So hopefully end of the next year, this project will go live. So yeah. And then was, what has also mentioned that you know, we do interior designing and other things too. You know, our part of the world, the companies are quite diversified, but moving forward, actually, you know, see we are now trying to focus more and more for logistics, food and IT. These are the three sectors where now our group, uh, group more uh, like moving forward, we want, we are investing and we are mainly focusing in these three sectors of business. Oh, very good. That's it's really impressive. So, so one of the things I would like to touch, so being a, a, a group quite strong in Bangladesh and as well, uh, we're going through a big challenge right now and that's the COVID-19. There's a lot of things happening as well that I think is affecting all countries. And I know that Bangladesh affects specifically the, the, um, the biggest industry that you have, that is, like you said, the garments and the textiles. So how do you see this challenge with COVID-19 and do you see this as an opportunity? In one end, there's an opportunity here to redesign economies around digital and to accelerate a lot of education, a lot of process that have been very slow to change, especially in financial industry, but as well in, in just general operations and education, a lot of things. Do you see this, uh, that Bangladesh has that opportunity as, a, as a, an economy in the country that has less um, probably legacy systems that we have, for instance, in Europe or in other parts of the world? See, any crisis also bring uh, opportunities. And uh, uh, as I said, that the garments business, Bangladesh is the second largest garments exporter in the world. By default, this business will be affected because, you know, the fast fashion industry all over the world is being affected. So, you know, by default, like, you know, we will face this. Another challenge that Bangladesh is going to face is that, you know, we have a lot of Bangladeshis who are working all over the world. And they used to send remittance back to Bangladesh. Bangladesh used to get about 15, 16 billion dollars every year from this earning. So a lot of these are our Bangladeshi brothers and sisters. They are now back in Bangladesh. So remittance will have an issue. And Bangladesh is also an import-based country. In other than rice, a lot of the necessity products like, you know, whether it's raw sugar or crude edible oil, everything else actually we import. So we need foreign currency. So personally, I think that moving forward where Bangladesh will play a major role is in case of IT export. I'm again going back what I said before that, you know, government has invested heavily in last 10 years because 10 years before we didn't have the infrastructure. Today we do. Today we have the infrastructure. Now we will just have to take the next step and we will have to get into, we'll have to tap that market because I think when it comes to IT export businesses and all, 
Bangladesh will play a major role. And when it comes to India and China, Bangladesh is much more competitive because I am in this business. I know like, you know, my IT company, I have 1500 people, but inshallah by end of this year, we are planning to add another 5,000. So this is how actually we are looking. So I think that moving forward, technology is the next way for Bangladesh where, uh, you know, uh, the deficit we are going to face from our foreign currency earning, that is where I think our IT industry is going to play a major role. Now, oh, fantastic. And so coming back to the, the Dakar Art Summit. So I know that you have some impressive numbers uh, in terms of people coming to the events and, and as well participating. Can you tell us a bit about, from the last four editions, kind of some of the benchmark and the numbers and as well the achievements that you think are the best things that happen with that? So Dhaka Art Summit, it's a, it's a public event and it's open for all. And um, it's a free event. So, and um, like Rajiv said, like, you know, in Bangladesh, you know, culture, you know, every, culture is for everyone. Whether in Bangladesh, whether it's a cricket event, whether it's a music event, or whether it's a, some kind of festival, we're always, we're never short of people, or we never think that, okay, will people come? It's always overcrowded, because these are the things that people we look forward to and we, we have it in our diaries. And also Dhaka Art Summit has become an event, although we organize it, it's no longer our event. It's owned by the country. It's everybody's event. So it's, it's become an event that, you know, it's in your diary. It's something you look forward to. It's for everyone. People come back multiple times. And it's a place where you bring your family, you bring your grandparents, you bring your kids. It's, it's, it's a huge event and also it, it's a place where there's always something for everyone. So we have, of course, we have the art, art um, exhibition, then we have lots of performance, we have film screening, we have photography, we have talks, we have multiple workshops, um, we have workshop for kids. So, I mean, it's always a big crowd and this year, uh, which was um, our largest visitor group, so over nine days, we had have, we have, we have close to half a million visitors. So which is a lot because um, it's, uh, you know, it's our fifth edition. It just gets bigger and bigger every time. Um, so it's been a huge success. And just to add with Nadia, what you said that, you know, see our exhibitions, they have traveled around the world. Like, you know, in different museums, in different institutions, a lot of the works have been, uh, you know, exhibited in different biennials, a lot of the works have been collected by the, so there are actually many, many uh, examples like this. And as Nadia said that, you know, see, our visitors also, whether uh, just uh, like, you know, general audience to head of states like 2000, uh, 18, we also had the president of Switzerland who also visited us. So we have like, you know, this different diverse group of visitors uh, who come. And one of the, the current edition, if I'm coming back to our last edition, I think one of the most important thing we have also done that you know, we have produced an exhibition on the father of the nation of Bangladesh called Lighting the Fire of Freedom. Bongo Bundu Sheikh Mojibur Rahman. So, so we did this exhibition to celebrate his 100 years birth celebration. And this exhibition was also supported by the ICT division and a local think tank called CRI. We did it in partnership with them. And very interestingly, this exhibition, I think for the first time, like in one of the exhibition, which was quite tech heavy. We used a lot of technology. It's a historic exhibition of his timeline. Uh, from his birth to his assassination in 1975. So that is something was also very special that, you know, we were celebrating because, you know, he's the father of the nation. His story is the story of Bangladesh. So, and, and as I said, the rise, uh, we, we collaborated with our information technology division in Bangladesh, the Bangladesh government, they were also partnered in this exhibition. And we are hoping that this exhibition will also going to travel uh, in different institutions in West. So this was something very special for us also for this particular edition. And we'll, we'll add this to the interview with some pictures that we're going to get from you. Your focus is Bangladesh, but as well Southeast Asia. So um, 
Can you tell us this relationship between Bangladesh uh, you, and all the countries around Southeast Asia? We share the fast growing economies in the world. And actually, I, probably in terms of population, the biggest chunk of the population of the world, if you put all of that together, I think probably 60 to 70% of the world population is around between India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and all the countries around there. And of course, you put on the top of that Vietnam and as well Indonesia and uh, Malaysia and so forth. So can you just, uh, and I'm talking about, of course, Philippines as well. So I don't know what relationships are there between Bangladesh and these countries, and as well the dynamics between both uh, business, but as well cultural and the economical and the technological as well. So I'll start, uh, uh, so Nadia, you can add. So basically, like, you know, one of the focus of uh, our uh, Dhaka Art Summit we are calling it a platform for South Asian art because Dhaka Art Summit actually is the largest and only event that is dedicated mainly for South Asian art. So, you know, see, when we, and, and you know, when we talk to the people, we talk about Dhaka Art Summit, we tell people that Dhaka Art Summit is a breath of fresh air. You come and you will discover something new because, you know, to an extent, the art infrastructure in South Asia other than India, it's quite challenging. So people also don't have much access to this part of the world. So this is how actually we created this platform that okay, when you come to Bangladesh, to Dhaka Art Summit, you not only discover artists from Bangladesh, but you discover the artists from the region. Because you see a lot of museums, a lot of institutions. Because if I, if I give you an example, because of the economic shift, actually art market also moved towards the East, like you know, China today. This is probably the uh, uh, largest art market today. So there are a lot of attention and we also believe that, okay, people want to know, people want to learn about us and this door has opened for us. And this is how we created this, that to make it more interesting for our audience. And what Nadia also said before that we invite the curators. So we invite the curators and curators do their research in South Asia and they produce their uh, uh, produce these uh, exhibitions and over from edition to edition our curators also looked at from South Asia to Southeast Asia they looked at different historical connections also the trade channels and all those things so different curators have also produced like you know different exhibition like this over a period of time and this last edition we also had over like 30 uh, countries, artists from 30 countries, 30, yeah. different, countries, 30 yeah. different countries, like, you know, who participated in this uh, uh, last edition of Dhaka Art Summit. Bearing in mind that we are in, a, well, with COVID-19 and all the different things, how do you coordinate these activities based between your groups so the financial component and the economical and as well logistics, then the art and as well the technology part? Are you creating a platform yourselves? Are you using different ways? And I know that you're doing a lot of things right now during COVID-19, but just to understand the logistics and the operations. Because it's quite a big event. And for instance, most of the, the biennials or events at, at the, the dimension of what we have, they are sponsored by governments or big corporations. If you look at Manifesta or the Venice Biennial or even uh, Sao Paulo uh, Biennial and so forth. So how do you handle all that part? Because it, there's a component of arts, but a financial component. And these events normally are key events to position cities worldwide. So it is quite important as well as a perspective of the city and sometimes governments. Right. So, so we have also, uh, we have also a program uh, uh, from our foundation that we are uh, like, you know, started maybe Nadia, you can talk about it. Okay. Um, so I think what, what you meant, like, you know, thinking about the future Dhaka Art Summit, or are you talking about our new, what we're doing during this during this time. Yeah, what you've been doing so far, and then you can talk about the future. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I mean, you know, this during this pandemic, I mean, of course, it's such a difficult time for everyone, for every sector. I mean, uh, I mean, of course, art, but every sector, everybody's suffering. So we, during this time, we thought that, you know, from our foundation, I mean, whatever we do is public. It's public event, it's for the mass, and um, and it's open for all and it's for the general public. So during this time, what can we do to for our audiences? So that's how we came up with this idea of this initiative called Art Around the Table. 
it's a, it's a program where we have invited artists, curators, um, scholars from around the world. I mean, because we've worked with so many people for the last 10 years and we've great, built great friendship. So we invited some of them to do like little workshops for us or make little videos, which we can share with, with everybody. And you know, these are workshops which people can do at home with their families and with their children. So um, they have generously, I mean, of course, are making this. So, but in return, um, if we're donating from the foundation, we're donating money to um, a foundation in Bangladesh called Jago Foundation, which is a foundation, uh, it's, a, it's actually a school for street children, slum kids. So we're giving money in their name to, uh, to feed the community of Bangladesh. So that's how the art around the table came, the name that, you know, we're sharing food with our community, but at the same time, we're nourishing our minds. And in terms of the, the future, how do you see the future of the event? And as well, the, um, the relationships between all these different institutions, but as well, especially right now with COVID-19, uh, do you see if there will be any changes or not? Or are you going to continue business as usual? See, Dhaka Art Summit is a biannual event. So we just finished our event yeah. in 2020 and the next one is in 2022. So we're hoping by then this pandemic we will all be <laughs> Yes. We're, we're keeping positive that, you know, we can go up, we can be normal because Dhaka Art Summit is all about the people. It's all about the crowd. It's all about the people. So. Um, Dhaka Art Summit, I mean, of course, there was a lot of talk that, you know, whether we want to do anything digitally, but it won't be the same thing. Dhaka Art Summit's identity is the people. So, I mean, there's still time. We're still keeping positive. Um, so, let's see. Yeah. So, uh, so, I think in terms of uh, wrapping up a bit the interview and probably one or two last questions. So, for people that want to know more about uh, your event and as well, they want to participate, let's say other museums around the world. Uh, I've been working with a couple of them. You are right now trying to expand besides the Tate network and the Harvard network as well. How do you see these international relationships? Because these events have a huge power and as well, they have a component of cultural, artistic, but as well, economical and financial. And as well, we are offering it for free, but as it creates a huge visibility for the city and for the country and for the organizations involved. So what's your goal in terms of these international relationships and networks? So we, <clears throat> we have a, uh, already, we already, like, you know, see our, these networks, we are uh, expanding. Uh, we already have a pretty big network group of friends, like, you know, see, even if you talk about universities, like, you know, this time also we partnered with Cornell University. Even we had partners like Getty Foundation, to Swiss Art Council, to British Council. So we have all the cultural bodies and we also partner with a lot of educational institutions like, you know, Harvard, Yale, Cornell. So different universities, different times, you know, we, we are, and, and this is something, you know, we are expanding because Dhaka Art Summit, we call it a research platform because there is no art sale. There is no buy and sell business. It's just an exhibition you see an exhibition you see with a lot of like research and with a lot of information. So of course, moving forward, we will be like, you know, working. We want to work with more institutions and more and more institutions are also taking interest in our event. So the last edition, we also had over 70 international partners. So this network is, uh, we are expanding and our next phase, what we are doing, we are building a sculpture park. Uh, and an art center in northeastern part of Bangladesh called Silet. And we are also going to have a lot of collaboration there because that uh, art center is going to have a residency space. It will also have independent pavilions where we are going to show our collection. And the sculpture park is also going to have a lot of new commissions by artists, uh, done by the artists from around the world. And this is something that we are doing. Uh, this will be something unique for South Asia. So I think like, you know, it is also going to attract a lot of people from around the world, the way they came for Dakar Summit, they're also going to come to, along with Dakar Summit also to see this uh, sculpture park and uh, experience. It. So yes, that network, of course, and network actually are the people who supported us all throughout. 
so you know when everyone sort of coming together that is how like you know uh, like you know, we are there are a lot of whatever challenges obstacles we face this is how actually uh, we do this uh, solution very good so 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 that's really well very impressive to say less. so i think so as a wrap up so mostly in terms of, uh, I want one thing in terms of education, because I think that's one of my, my passions and I know that is in a country so young as Bangladesh. So there's mentioned that there's a lot of universities over there that are familiar students that are coming out of the universities. So what is the relationship that you're doing with these young people? And for instance, are you, and as well the dynamics you see, because at the end of the day, we would see that Bangladesh is going to be one of the future leader economies, if, if we well structured. Are you trying as well to do a lot of things in these areas of education, relationship with universities? Uh, when it comes to like Dhaka Summit, definitely we have like, you know, uh, even in Dhaka Summit also, we have different programs like, you know, see art mediators. So art mediators are the people actually who are trained by our partner organization that is Pro Helvetia, which is the Swiss Art Council. And these art mediators actually they tell people they explain about the artwork to the people so these are the there are different like you know volunteers group we have uh, who are actually which who are the mainly this young generation from bangladesh from different institutions there are different art projects also we collaborate with students so actually hundreds and hundreds of people together especially this young generation together Everyone's work together actually make Dhakar Summit possible. Also, in terms of education, when we say that you know we have so many brilliant uh, speakers, like I think um, this edition we had almost 120 speakers. So we have so many speakers, and they're all like you know top um, scholars from around the world. You know, researching on um, South Asian art history. And these, so when they're speaking, when they're submitting their paper, they're speaking about their paper, their thesis. Yes, all yes. these, um, all these pa uh, panels are open. So a lot of students come in and participate and hear these incredible scholars. So it's a big education platform too. Fantastic. So, so, and so to finish and uh, thank you for your time. So what would be, let's say, people that never heard about you, where they can find you, how can they engage, and as well, websites and different components digital? Okay, so um, I think just uh, our website is Dhaka Art Summit, Samdani Art Foundation. So under the Samdani Art Foundation is the main mother um, organization, and under the Samdani Art Foundation is the Dhaka Art Summit, which is one of the events. And then an extension is um, the sculpture park in Silet. So it's actually all under um, a single website, but then there are separate Instagram. websites. And also um, we have all our social media. So Dhaka Art Summit, Samdani Art Foundation, Art Around the Table. If any of you want to do workshops during this time, Art Around the Table is a great platform to look at videos to do with your families. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. We'll put all these links in, in, uh, in the, the video profiles, of course, in the podcast, which will be distributed all over the internet. And uh, it's been an honor and privilege. Well, congratulations. Continue great, doing great work. And I hope that, we, that I can actually go to the next edition for sure. And as well, collaborate much more. Next, next edition. You'll yes. be in Dhaka. For sure. Now, count on me. Thank you so much. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.